We've been pretty busy on the internet, or we were the whole time we are in Panama. Elena edited three different movies, I think. Um, I was sorting out the sat phone and trying to check out the weather for the Galapagos trip the whole time. We had a few, actually, business-type phone calls for La Vagabond stuff, which is pretty interesting. But we felt like we were almost a bit slavish to the internet. And now it's really good to be back out on the ocean with a beautiful sunset and we can relax and chill out and enjoy ourselves. Okay, Splinter, what's going on? Splinter? He wears a purple robe. Oh. <laughs> uh, we left Panama today, Panama City, and it's been dead calm. We've had about eight knots of wind, so we're throwing up the spinning car, and we're going to leave it up overnight. I'll be sleeping outside here, so yeah. should be all good. Nice uh, gown. I know. It's the first time I've pulled it out in months and months and months. It is actually cold outside. Yeah, it's freezing. So I've made a herbal tea and gotten rugged up and I'm going to read my book outside and snuggle up. I look good too. Yes, very nice trackies. <laughs> we are bored. Yeah. <laughs> it's about 5.30, 6 in the morning. Riley woke me up about an hour ago to jump on shift and uh, yeah, I'm about to see the sunrise. There's a big sea container ship cruising by. So the wind picked up from about 6pm yesterday until until 12 and then uh, completely died for, the, for all the morning. So we've just thrown out the head sail and I'm waiting for Riley to wake up and put the spinnaker back up. And I think the whole trip's gonna be like this. It's very pleasant. It's straight from behind, so we're sitting on about five knots just with the head sail out. Let's watch Cool Runnings out here. If anyone hasn't watched Cool Runnings in a while, I suggest you watch it today, right now, or tonight. Because I've forgotten how funny that movie is. I've just been in hysterics this morning out here. I can hear the roar of that ship's engine. Very murky. Yeah? It's actually scary. First fish in a long time. It better be a good one. You better be tasty. It's a tuna. I told you I wanted a tuna for dinner. I'm right behind you, babe. So be careful where you flick that. It's beautiful. It's a nice looking tuna, isn't it? Yeah. It's a yellow fin. This is why I love sailing and I love the ocean. It's very peaceful. You can you can really breathe out here and, and think without all these distractions. Now I'm absolutely torturing Riley. I just gave him dinner and I said he has to wait because I need to film it. <laughs> but this is what I've done with the tuna. It's raw. I copied a recipe from Bonaire. It's like balsamic sesame seeds. Salad. All right, you may eat. So I woke up this morning and all the sails were out. What happened, babe? Uh, the wind was coming from here, very lightly, 
and then it came now it's coming from there so I turned the engine off and hoisted all the sails so we're heading into it which increases the speed of the wind so 4.5 knots I believe what we're sitting on 4.9 actually and it's beautiful it's dead calm still yeah this is uh, doesn't get more pleasant than this all right um, sorry yeah, mum yeah good I'm just calling you from the sat phone what are you First call on the sat phone, Mum. Well, thank you. No, that's all right. Look, I'll I'll let you get back to sleep. I'm sorry. I thought it was one o'clock midday there, not midnight. <laughs> oh. oh right. Oh no, no, yeah. With the sun in the middle of the sky, Raoul spotted some tuna glittering under the boat. Oh, this is exciting. Do you want me to wear a GoPro? Yeah, I got the GoPro here. Okay. Probably about six or eight tuna down there, all chasing a little fish which is hanging out under the boat. I jumped down there and tried to shoot a couple of them, but just scared them. Yeah. They took off. Bugger. There'll be more. When the weather is consistent and there is little sail changes to be made, it's easy to become quickly bored if you don't keep busy. One thing I enjoy doing and I make a big event of the day is lunchtime. With a bit of teamwork, love and creativity, you can buy yourself a good hour and of course your stomach loves you for it. We're listening to a podcast about the Galapagos Islands and it's really funny. About trying to get turtles to mate. Yeah, they found the last male turtle on the island of Pinta and they tried to get it to mate and it just wasn't interested. And then all of a sudden, like years later, it shagged two turtles and both of them were infertile, so it <laughs> didn't matter. But yeah, learning a lot about the Galapagos and I'm getting super excited to arrive. Ah! I had a fabulous sleep. Hello. Thank you for sleeping outside. That's all right. It's a, it's a hard job sleeping. <laughs> but someone else has to do it. I can't sleep outside because these seats are too narrow and I can only sleep in one position at the moment. It's so annoying. I've got to have one leg up here and one straight and one arm behind my head and there's just not enough room here. What's up? What happened with the fridge? I got a eucalyptus lolly. Well, nothing happened to the fridge. The freezer has overfrosted again. It keeps doing it and we've been playing around with the settings a million and one times and we can't seem to find the right one. So, uh, I've stopped, you know, we thought we had it right this time and I've stocked up the freezer preparing for the big Pacific crossing and, and yeah, it's just overfrosted again, so. At least we can shut the door now. The freezer door. Yes. Alina, that was the biggest splash, man. It might get it again. Nah. Fuck, that was huge. <laughs> Why didn't it take it? There was a splash that was as big as this cockpit. Yeah, I saw the leftover. Did ya? Of it, yeah. See that wood in the background? Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be... That might have been a huge dolphin fish. Can we go back there? Yeah. Do you want to blow the sail and... Oh, there's something back there. I need my sunnies. Yeah, I can see it. Oh my God, it's huge. Is it? Yeah, it's going to go for it again. Hold the fishing rod. Oh! Quick, get the rod! <laughs> Oh, Elena, we need to blow this. Okay. Blow this. Okay. Oh no. Is it broken? No. Nah, feel it at the end. No! Oh. Oh! That's absolute 
Galapagos, but we are, we're like three days away. Um, but yeah, we've had that giant lure out for months and months, and only today have we got not one strike, but two. So that's telling us something, and we've seen some giant dolphins, which we thought were whales, and some regular sized dolphins. I, I can't stop, like, watching the horizon. Right, what just happened? Um, a boat with maybe five guys in it, like a, one of those fast wooden, the typical boat that you'd think would be full of pirates. Come, came burning over, like really quickly. So I ran downstairs to where Elena was and I was like, go and hide, because we've got a little spot that we've organized for Elena to hide in. And, but they just wanted some food, but it just scared the shit out of me. Oh, poor blokes, they're out in the middle of nowhere sort of fishing. Are you alright? I'm alright, yeah. Uh, they were just out in the middle of nowhere fishing. I'm like, I'm 150 miles from Galapagos, so they are in the middle of nowhere, but, and it's not really. I, it just was very unexpected seeing a boat closing so quickly, and yeah. That was the scariest I've been in a while. Yeah. Can't imagine how you felt. Oh, I... But being in the hiding spot and not being able to hear what's going on upstairs, like, I'm just thinking the worst. It's... Thanks for watching. Please join us next week for the remaining 100 miles to the Galapagos. We explore the island of San Cristobal and we are joined by my friends Nicole and Joel.